Hey everyone, it's Kevin. Welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'll show you how to create this stylized stipple tune shader in Blender 3D using Eevee. I recently featured this shader in my Grease Pencil Glow Effects video, so I thought I'd put together a quick tutorial on how to achieve that look. With that project, I was going for an illustrative style, and this shader works great if you're trying to achieve something similar. If you've seen my simple stylized tune shaders video, this one uses a similar setup to the textured gradient shader, but with a few adjustments. I'll also have this file available as a free download on my Gumroad. To do this, I'll walk through the mesh shader first and then the gradient background. Here I'm in Blender 4.2 and in the layout workspace. First, I'll change the color management settings in the render properties tab for our non-photorealistic work, specifically setting the view transform dropdown to standard. If you don't know what this does, it allows colors in our viewport to appear accurately according to the ones in the picker. I'll switch the viewport shading to material preview. Since the shader can be affected by the lights in our scene, I'll also toggle on scene lights and scene world to see the shader more accurately. I also want to work with a more organic shape, so I'll delete the cube with X and bring in a mesh monkey. Let's subdivide the monkey by going to the modifier properties tab and selecting subdivision surface from the list. I'll set the levels to 2. Now a quick way to apply a subdivision surface modifier with levels 2 is to select your mesh and hit Ctrl 2. Scale it up slightly and then right click shade auto smooth. Down here, I'll switch the dope sheet to the shader editor, create a new material, and name it Stipple. The first part of the shader will be a basic tune shader. Bring in a shader to RGB node and a color ramp, and place them both after the principled BSDF. If we change the color ramp's interpolation from linear to constant, you'll see it reflected accordingly. And if I shift the sliders, I can change the coverage. This setup is pretty common and it allows you to achieve a cell shaded look. The shader to RGB node is specific to Eevee and it converts a shader's lighting and shading information into flat color data. Essentially, it takes complex shading properties like reflections and material responses to light and simplifies them into pure color output based on the scene's lighting, which is why you'll often see this setup paired with a diffuse BSDF instead. This conversion makes it easier to create stylized or non-photorealistic effects with other color nodes. You can then use a color ramp node to control the result, adjusting how shadows and highlights appear to get the exact look you want. As the shader can be affected by lights in our scene, I'm going to move this point light in front of it and lower the wattage to around 750. Going back to the color ramp, I'll set specific values and multiply them by a color. This will make it easier to change colors when applied to other objects. I'll adjust the positioning slightly, setting the black value to around 0.4 and adding another slider and setting that to about 0.1. Next, I'll bring in a mix color node after the color ramp and set it to multiply. Set the factor to 1 and choose a color for the B input. You'll see our monkey changes hue accordingly. The colors look a bit flat, so to make them richer, I'll shift the darker value in the color ramp to a cool hue and the lighter value to a warm one. You might encounter a situation where the sliders won't allow full control over the coverage. To fix this, I would usually recommend lowering the value of the base color in the BSDF. However, since we'll be using it for this shader, let's add a math node and place it after the shader to RGB node. Set it to multiply with a starting value of 1 and adjust as needed. Now let's move on to the texture. I want to create some texture at each color transition, so let's bring in a gradient texture and a Voronoi texture node. Set the Voronoi to 4D and the scale to 175. If we connect the color output of the Voronoi node to the color input of the BSDF, it'll apply the texture across the entire object. However, I only want it applied along a gradient, so we need to mix these two nodes. Bring in a mix color node and connect the gradient and Voronoi textures. Then connect it to the color input of the BSDF. Increase the factor a bit, I'll set mine to around 0.7, and tweak the color ramp a bit as well. To control this even more, add a mapping node and a texture coordinate node. 
If you're using Node Wrangler, which is a free Blender add-on, you can quickly set this up by selecting one of the nodes and hitting Ctrl T. Now connect generated to vector and then link vector to both texture nodes. This will make it easier to control where the textures show up. If you want to fine tune the gradient placement, you can mess around with the location and rotation values in the mapping node. As for the texture coordinate node, I usually use either generated or object. To clarify, generated coordinates are automatically created to fit the shape of your object. So the texture warps around evenly, no matter the size or shape. This is perfect if you want the texture to look uniform across the whole surface. Object coordinates are a bit different. They're based on the texture's position relative to the object's origin point or another reference object, which is handy if you want more control over how the texture is positioned. For this, we'll just use generated since it's the simplest option for getting a consistent texture across the surface. To finish this off, I want to add some particles on top of the shader. Bring in a noise texture and a color ramp. Set the color ramp to constant and connect the color output of the noise texture to the color ramp input. Then duplicate this multiply node, place it after it, and connect the new nodes accordingly. This setup overlays a noise texture on top of the original tune shader we created. So in the mix node, whatever is in slot B will appear on top. Shift the white slider here to see the coverage underneath and set the noise scale to around 150. You can also adjust the opacity of the texture via the mix node factor. Lastly, for more control, add a mapping and texture coordinate node to finish it off. And that's it for the shader. For the gradient background, switch the dropdown to World. This setup will be similar to the one we just created for the mesh, but with a few slight differences. If you've seen my flower vase tutorial, it's the same setup with some adjustments. Duplicate the background node and bring in a mix shader. Connect the nodes accordingly. Next, add a light path node and connect is camera ray to the factor input of the mix shader. This setup allows us to separate how scene lighting affects the meshes from the background color itself. So the top affects the coverage and the bottom the color. Now to change the background color, bring in a color ramp and a mix color node set to multiply. Set the factor to 1 and connect the color ramp to the A input. Then the result to both background nodes. Similar to our previous setup, specify your values and choose the color you want for the background in the multiply node. If you'd like, you can duplicate the color ramp from the previous setup and use those values as a starting point. To get the gradient to appear, add a gradient texture, a mapping, and a texture coordinate node. Connect them accordingly. Set the Y rotation to 90 to orient the gradient vertically and set the X location to 0.25 to lower it. For the texture details, bring in a noise texture and a Voronoi texture node. Set the noise scale to 150 and the Voronoi to 4D with a scale of 800. Connect the mapping output to the vector inputs of both texture nodes. Then add a mix color node to combine them. Connect the noise and Voronoi textures to it and lower the factor to 0.2. Finally, duplicate the mix node Place it after the gradient texture node, connect the nodes accordingly, and set the factor to 0.8. To adjust this, it's easier to do this in camera view. So here, I brought in a new window and set the left viewport to it. Again, you can adjust the mapping values and the color ramp slider positions to your liking. And that's it for the shaders. That's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I hope this was helpful for your non-photorealistic project. If you're looking to combine this with Grease Pencil, feel free to check out my other videos like the Glow Effects tutorial or the Cozy Jungle Treehouse project. And if you'd like something more in-depth or slower paced, you can check out my course Magic Storybook over at cgboost.com. There, I walk through everything you need to know to get started with Grease Pencil and 2D 3D art in Blender 3D. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next video.